We're starting out a new unit on cells. And before we start, I want to find out what you know about cells already. You learned about it in fifth grade. Let's find out what you remember, all right? So on your paper, in the middle, I want you to write the word cells. In seventh grade, the cell standards uh, build on what the students have already learned in fifth grade. They already have a basic understanding of the cell parts. I feel like um, the most important part of my job is making them understand those cellular functions and how they relate to the functioning of the human body. By focusing on cell transport and the cell processes, it teaches them more about how our body as a whole works. Now that you've had a chance to do a little table talk, um, I want to hear your best one. So pick which one you think is the best one. Who has a really, really good one for building? What do you think, Ariana? Cell is like a building because it's a factor that works together and has different sections. OK, works together, has different sections. That's a good analogy. Who else has a good one for building? Elliot. Uh, buildings are like cell because they build up the city and provide action for people inside of it. At this point in the unit, the students have already had homeostasis lessons. Now we're trying to tie it into how our cells work. We do this a couple different ways. We look at some examples from case studies from, from the news of ways in which homeostasis has failed. Imagine you're a shipwrecked sailor. You end up on a small desert island, and there's no fresh water to drink. You know you can survive for a while without food, but you're not going to survive very long without water, right? But you're on an island. You're surrounded by water. The obvious choice is to drink the seawater, right? Mm-mm. No. no. Why not, James? Because the seawater will make you die quicker. It does. You'll die faster with the seawater. But why? Why does that happen? Why do, we, why do we have limitations on how much salt we can have in the water we drink? There's some salt in water that you get out of the tap, but why is there a limitation on how much of it? What do you think? There's too much salt in the water. It will dehydrate you quickly. OK, so we're going to do a little experiment to see if we can see this in action. So the purpose of the Shipwreck Sailor Lab is for students to be able to see the effect of salt water on the cells, because it's one thing to say drinking salt water makes you sick, but it's another thing to say, how does it make you sick? And uh, that is a very visual way for them to see that. We're going to use pieces of potato to represent the cells in our body. So we're going to have cells in the form of a piece of potato, and we're going to expose them to different levels of salt water, because some salt water is stronger than other salt water. And like I said, the water that comes out of your tap has some salt in it. So why doesn't that make you sick? We're going to find out what level it is that is toxic versus OK to drink. All right? How does the salt water concentration affect the potato slices is the question we're going to try to solve. I want to hear from some of you sharing out to the class what did you conclude. I'm going to start with you. Tell me what you discovered. We think we saw that uh, the one with more salt didn't get as black and as withered as okay. the one with uh, like ten percent salt solution. Okay. And so uh, for that point, we think that like there's like a sweet spot kind of like on a equilibrium. Okay. Kind of thing. Um, but we think all the water because the more salt it got smaller instead of bigger. So we're thinking the salts like pulled out the water to reach like an equilibrium. After we spent a little bit of time talking about these vocabulary terms. The next step is to apply it to real life, and that's where the Puerto Rico problem comes in. We spend some time talking about um, the problems of getting fresh water when it's not available and why it's so important to do so. And from there, the students use the engineering design process to come up with a solution for the problem of the lack of fresh water in places like Puerto Rico that have been hit by hurricanes. So when we're talking about fresh water and the urgency of having fresh water, um, one place where fresh water is a grave concern right now is in Puerto Rico. Um, in Puerto Rico, 
the island was struck by two hurricanes that completely destroyed their infrastructure. And uh, one of the things that was destroyed was their water supply. So imagine, if you, if you can, what it's like to not have access to fresh water. Your <coughs> task to start is to brainstorm some ways to capture or purify water that can be accomplished with simple, common, household, inexpensive materials, okay? That's your first task. Once we've done that, we are going to uh, come up with a plan. You and your team are gonna come up with a plan to uh, create something, invent something, or modify something that can be used for this purpose. Our idea is purifying water and it's a way to clean the dirty water in Puerto Rico. So step one is to pour the dirty water through the built-in filter. Step two is to give the water some time to filter through and get rid of any dirt and bugs. Then what you do is you open up the tap and fill up your glass with some clean, refreshing water. And the filter is made out of a microfiber cloth that filters the dirt and bugs out. So after we spend some time talking about photosynthesis and respiration, we loop around to fermentation. Fermentation is basically respiration without oxygen. And this is applicable not only to them, they can feel fermentation when they run really hard and get cramps in their legs, but it's also important because fermentation is a way to make alcohols and biofuels to help them understand the real world applications of fermentation, I give them a little uh, challenge to develop um, a concept for a biofuel business. So one of the neatest cell processes is fermentation. Fermentation, if you remember, is what? Who remembers what fermentation is? Think hard. Been a while, huh? Do you remember? Burning of energy without sugar? Burning sugar without, without oxygen. oxygen. All right, so when we need energy really fast, faster than our body can get it to us, our cells go through a process of fermentation. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use our engineering design process to try to come up with a way to make biofuels efficiently, all right? So the question, the problem we have here is how can we make biofuels cheaply and safely, and how can uh, people make money doing this, right? This challenge starts with just having them do some experimentation with fermentation. And from that, they develop their own business plan related to biofuel production. to pitch our idea of using corn ethanol as a biofuel but in a little bit of a different way. So 40% of corn is used for biofuel and only one part of the corn is used to make it so we figured out that you can use the husks to make biofuel instead of just using one part of the corn. A lot of corn gets wasted every year but overall like the husk outside they get wasted but we can reuse that because there's trash cans full of it, and we see it when we go to the supermarket to buy corn. Trash cans full of it that we can turn into something else and use it. And this is also something that you could do at home. After you eat your corn and you're just going to throw away the husk, you don't have to because you could even make your own biofuel out of the husks and the cobs right at your home. So for our business plan, we're going to market it to like gas stations that use for motor vehicles and we can um, advertise it to commercials and um, to commercials and we're going to buy land so we can grow the corn and like make the corn ethanol. There's also a summative assessment that I like to do where students take on a role and that role is a medical counselor and the medical counselor needs to explain it in a way that you can understand but also so that it doesn't freak you out. 
So you are medical counselors. Everybody got that role in their mind? Good, okay. So imagine that your audience is patients and families who have a limited scientific background. They are not medical doctors. They need to have things broken down for them in a way that they can understand. Each group is going to be given a different disorder related to cellular function. Your job is to research this, find out how it affects people, think about how you could present that information to somebody in a way that they will understand. Trisomies is a disorder when you have three chromosomes. The most common trisomy that we all know of is Down syndrome. Down syndrome is where you have two chromosomes from your mother and one from your father. This normally relates into a devastated mitochondria and all your organs work at the lowest quality. Um, so the problems with this is that your immune system is very like low in function and so you can develop illnesses really quickly. Um, no, most notably when you get older, Alzheimer's. Um, sadly, this is only therapy. There's no cure for it. Um, that'll probably be impossible. Um, and so, but it stays stable, which is the upside of Down syndrome. Um, and so people at Stanford think it's a vitamin B misfunction on the mother's side. So symptoms of Down syndrome would be mental illnesses, uh, physical disabilities, uh, speech disabilities, uh, irrationality, and like decreased muscle tone and brain function. And so that's what usually occurs with the trisomy, three chromosomes. Thank you.